مبارك وسلم وسلم عليه سلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا حبيبي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا رحمة للعالمين سلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته to Sheikh and to everyone الحمد لله وقال Sheikh that will continue speaking on the Sawuf and I'm handing over to Sheikh in order just to save time Sheikh تفضل أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين قال رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين قالوا سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما نافعا وارزقنا عملا صالحا ورزقا واسعا وشفاء من كل داء وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين أما بعد All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, sustainer, nourisher, protector. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us in formulating our intentions behind attending this class and the intentions and our intentions that we formulate to deal with the knowledge that we've acquired from these classes inshallah our intentions should always be to seek knowledge so that we can pass over the knowledge and al-imam al-haddad rahimahullah subhanahu wa ta'ala has formulated what they call niyatu ta'alim wa ta'allum and he says nawaitu ta'alluma wa ta'alima i have made the intention nawaitu التعلم والتعليم to learn and to teach والتذكر والتذكير and to remember and to remind نويت التعلم والتعليم والتذكر والتذكير والنفع والانتفاع and to benefit and benefit others والحث على التمسك بكتاب الله and to encourage people to hold on to the book of Allah سبحانه وتعالى والسنة رسوله and to the sunnah of his, or the practice of his messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم and to call towards righteousness or guidance solely for the purpose of wanting or looking to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his face when we say in Arabic we do something for his face in other words we do it solely for him in deciding what text we should read and what text we should engage in uh, in discussing tasawwuf um, there are many texts and i've selected to read a book and there is a translation to which we, which i'll share with uh, samir and he can distribute it to everyone is a book by an imam al-ghazali called ayu al-walad dear son or dear boy and in imam al-ghazali it's not a it's not a lengthy book uh, Imam al-Ghazali, it's like about 30 pages, and Imam al-Ghazali wrote this book uh, in response to a question that came from one of his students. So one of his dedicated students, after having studied and as the author uh, or the compiler or the uh, person who has um, verified this text, says that this student has perfected daqaiq al the final items or the finer things in, 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 in the sciences. So he knew the technicalities. And before he was leaving, going home, uh, he, or he, when he got home, he wrote to Imam al-Ghazali and he asked him for a summary, something that if he kept with him and held on to it and did only that, he'd, he'd go a long way and uh, his salvation basically would be that. And he said, قَالَ وَإِنْ كَانَ مُصَنَّفَاتُ الشَّيْخِ كَالْإِحْيَاءِ And Imam al-Ghazali has got a famous book called Ihya Ulum al-Din, The Revival of the, uh, of the Sciences. 
And it's imperative that everyone has a copy of this uh, book in his home and regularly reads it. And he says, and if the compilations, or even though the compilations of the Sheikh that is an Imam al-Ghazali, or the revival, the book, the revival, and uh, others contain the answers to my question is for the sheikh to write for me my needs in a few pages that will be with me for the rest of my life. And I practice upon it for the duration of And beloved and noble. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make long for you your existence or your stay in his obedience. And may he make for you walking the path of his beloved. And that advice is, or the source of advice is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or is from the, the Mahadan, from the essence of the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In kana qad balagaka minhu nasiha. That is if you or if a portion of that nasiha has reached you. And if a portion of that nasiha from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has reached you, then what need is there for me to give you advice? in tabluhka, and if it hasn't reached you, and in other words, if the advice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has not reached you, Fakulli, then tell me. Mada Hasalta fi hadi his sinin and what have you collected or what have you achieved in these past years? Ayu Halwalad, dear boy. Minjumlati manasa nasa habihi rasulullah his son Allah who are he was seldom ummatahu kauluhu alama to eradi lahi eradi lahi anil abdi ishtigaluhu bimala yani. From amongst that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has advised his Ummah is his saying that the sign of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala turning away from his slave is when the slave becomes busy with that which is none of his business. Bima la ya'nihi, which that is none of his concern. And so if one looks at this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one would realize that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has made us, has created us, and our sole objective is to worry about ourselves. Yeah. A person, if his, if a moment of his time, a moment of his life is spent in other than which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created him for, then he is deserving that his regret be prolonged. In other words, that he, 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 he deserves to, or he should be regretful of wasting time in that which is not which has not been created for and i think this is a point that is very important and that we we often find ourselves engaged in and sometimes we go for religious events we go for a funeral and at the funeral we find the behavior of the attendees of the funeral doesn't at all 
reflect that we are in attend we are attending a funeral. Sometimes we go for a molud and we find people sitting outside and people coming for the samosas or people coming for whatever purposes they've come for. Like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us, that actions are in extent to their uh, intentions. In other words, if you came to the maulud or if you came to the funeral for the food, then so be it. If you came for the entertainment, or to associate with other people, then that's what you what you live with. However, if you have come with the purpose of becoming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, benefiting from the mawlud, benefiting from the funeral, then, then, then that's what you live. You should live with some benefit. And so the purpose of going to a funeral is not to bury the person as such. But the ultimate purpose of going to a funeral is to remind ourselves of death so that we can come out or leave the funeral closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and closer to, to the purpose for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created, created us for. وَمَنْ جَاوَزَ الْأَرْبَعِينَ وَلَمْ يَغْلِبْ خَيْرُهُ عَلَى شَرِّهِ فَلْيَتَجَهَّزْ إِلَى النَّارِ And I think the, this sentence can be written with uh, with gold and framed on our walls. And who has passed 40? In other words, he has exceeded 40 years of age. وَلَمْ يَغْلِبْ خَيْرُهُ عَلَى شَرِّهِ And his good has not overpowered his evil. Then he should prepare himself for the وَفِي هَذِهِ النَّصِيحَةِ كِفَايَةٌ لِأَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ and in this nasiha, or this is sufficient for the people of knowledge. Then he says, Ayyuh al dear boy, al nasiha to sahl, giving advice or advice is easy. Wal mushkilu qabuluha, and the problem is accepting it. Li annaha fi madaqi muttabi'i al hawa murrun. Li annaha fi madaqi muttabi'i al hawa murrun, because it is. To the people who follow their desires better. Because that which is prohibited is or, or the one yeah, the things that are prohibited are beloved to their hearts. Especially an official student of knowledge. Mushtagilu fadli nafsi wa manaqib dunya. So this person that is seeking knowledge uh, is looking at benefiting his nafs and looking for virtues in the dunya. فَإِنَّهُ يَحْسِبُ أَنَّ الْعِلْمَ الْمُجَرَّدَ لَهُ وَسِيلَ and so what Imam al-Ghazali is saying here is a person who seeks knowledge, a student of knowledge, if he pursues improving himself, if a person sole objective from seeking knowledge is to attain the chair on the stage in front of the of the majlis, of the maulud, in the jalsa, then if that is his purpose, his nafs, and benefiting from the dunya, becoming wealthy, whatever benefit he can achieve from the dunya. فَإِنَّهُ يَحْسِبُ أَنَّ الْعِلْمَ مُجَرَّدَ لَهُ وسيلة. And if you were to think that mere knowledge is a way to achieving this, سَيَكُونُ نَجَاتُهُ وَخَلَاسُهُ فِيهِ وَأَنَّهُ مُسْتَغْنٍ عَنِ الْعَمَلِ If he thinks that mere knowledge is going to be his his salvation. And he doesn't have to practice on the knowledge. This is the belief of the philosophers. So we should understand that Imam al-Ghazali lived in a time when the philosophers, where, where the works of the Greek philosophers were translated into Arabic 
and they were studied. And that is how Imam al-Ghazali became al Imam al-Ghazali because he was the best. He, out, he outsmarted the philosophers. Initially, he was regarded as a philosopher. And then he, he went through what, is, what we would probably term today a depression. He wasn't able to speak and he wasn't able to um, speak anymore. So and Imam al-Ghazali, after being the person that no one could beat at a debate, became a person that couldn't even speak anymore. And um, he sold everything, left the money to his family, his wife and children. Then he packed a little bag and he set off. He spent, uh, he first went for Hajj. And he told his family he's going for Hajj and he doesn't know when he'll come back. On his way back from Hajj, he went to Damascus. And whoever visited Damascus, there's a room that Imam al-Ghazali occupied in the masjid of um, the big masjid in Damascus, uh, Al-Umawiyah, al Masjid al umawi the masjid of Umawi. And he had a place where he wrote the book that we referred to previously, The Revival of the Sciences. And... His revival of the sciences, in his revival of the sciences, he set out, because he was a person who was very academic and scientific in his approach, he set out to write a, um, a book that encompassed a way to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm just looking for the book, it's easier somewhere. Um, I'll find it and I'll show it to people in the next... Uh, Plus, it's two, it's two volumes, like it's not very, very big. But if you look at the book, it's probably about that big. Uh, and Al Imam Al Ghazali's blueprint for reaching the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not simple. Uh, it requires great jihad and requires seeking knowledge. So there's no easy way to becoming a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you want to do it yourself, unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, going to take a person by the hand and, and throw him into wilaya. But a person seeking to become a wali of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should work hard at becoming so. And we often look at al wilaya as being a person chosen to be a wali and there's no way possible that we can become awliya. And that's incorrect because a person who can spend his day without doing anything incorrect is a wali. And if a person's focus and objective is how can he pray his salah on time? How can he perform his obligations on time? How can he better himself? How can he uh, not do anything wrong to anyone? So he's careful and chooses the words he speaks and the actions he does. And before doing anything, considers what he's doing and what he's saying, that person is guaranteed to become a wali. So wanting to progress in life uh, should not be limited to the dunya, but we should constantly uh, try and perfect our ourselves. And so an Imam al-Ghazali, he says, if you just want to seek knowledge for the purpose of knowing something so that you can throw it around in a debate and you don't want to practice upon it or you think you don't have to practice upon it, then that's as good as being from amongst the philosophers. It goes on to say, Subhanallah al-Azim, la ya'lamu hadha al-qadra annahu hina hassan al-ilma idha lam ya'mal bihi takunu al-hujjatu alayhi akid. كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إن أشد الناس عذابا يوم القيامة عالم لم ينفعه الله بعلمه. He says سبحان الله العظيم. Glory be to Allah سبحانه وتعالى the glorified or the great. لا يعلم هذا القدر. No one knows this much or does he not know this much that when he has obtained the knowledge and he hasn't acted upon it, then that would be a hujjah on him. It would be a proof against him. Like how the Prophet wasallam said, the people who will receive the most severe punishment 
on the day of Qiyamah is an alim whose knowledge did not benefit him or an alim that did not benefit from his knowledge. In other words, he obtained this knowledge but didn't practice upon it. And so this alim, it's significant that Imam al-Ghazali used the word alim, a person who knows. And a person who knows can, can be a person who knows one thing. Like, for example, a person knows he should pray on time. He shouldn't leave his Salat al till the time of Salat al-Asr or Salat al-Asr until the time of Salat al-Maghrib. This is a person who has knowledge. And a person who has just one piece of knowledge is an alim of that piece of knowledge. And if that piece of knowledge did not benefit him, then that knowledge is going to be a proof against him on the day of Qiyamah. And that knowledge will come forward and say, he knew that he was supposed to uh, uh, pray on time, but he didn't. And then Imam al-Ghazali goes, goes on to say, Waruya and Junaidan. When he speaks of Junaid, he's speaking of Al Imam Al Junaid. He says it is narrated that Al Imam Al Junaid, Qaddas Allah Ruha Al Aziz, Ru'iya fil Manami Ba'da Motihi. That Al Imam Al Junaid, Rahimahullah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was seen in a dream after his death. Faqila lahu. And it was said to him, Mal Khabaru ya Abu Al Qasim. He says, What is the news ya Abu Al Qasim? That was his uh, kunya. Qala Tahati al Ibarat. All the expressions, the Sufis have beautiful expressions. When you listen to them speaking, they you, you feel elevated. It says, all of those expressions that we had, all gone. And all the isharat that they used to give and they used to see, it's all gone. It's all uh, basically non-existent. And nothing benefited us except the few rakats that we prayed in the heart of the night. And so if we look at what an Imam al-Ghazali is, is calling his student to, he's calling his student to practice on that which he knows. And if a person, a person will on the day of Qiyamah be accountable in extent of his knowledge, a person won't be accountable for that which he did not know. However, it is an obligation upon a person to seek that much knowledge that ensures that he can perform his five daily or his five pillars uh, correctly. So a person should know the rulings of zakah, should know the rulings of fasting, should know the rulings of Salah and the rulings of Hajj. And the rulings of Hajj, before he goes for Hajj, he must know it. And so it's an obligation upon a person to educate himself. The first verse of the Quran that was revealed is Iqra. Read. And it goes without saying that an ignorant person cannot be a wali by effort. Those are the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had, had, had selected to be the people who walk the path of the unlettered Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa the Prophet that couldn't read and write. But ignorant people in general are not people that we look up to, neither are they people who are capable of attaining wilaya easily. And knowledge is something we should constantly pursue. Knowledge is something that we should ensure that our children constantly um, engage themselves in. And when you're speaking of knowledge, you're speaking of all knowledge, knowledge of the dunya, and more importantly than the knowledge of the dunya is the knowledge that saves us from the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and saves us from ignorance and ensures that we elevate our understanding so that we can uh, 
be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, perform our duties on a basis of understanding and not on a basis of ignorance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all and to guide us and to take us by our hands and bring us closer to him so that we can stand proudly and uh, on the day of Qiyamah in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and um, say that we've played our part in delivering the message of that he brought to us. Um, having said that, we should rear our children on love of knowledge and love of the ulama and love of the awliya because that is what brings us closer and keeps them in place. And our affiliation to the Mawlid and our affiliation to these different gatherings is what keeps us on a path and constantly reminds us of who we are and what our objective is and helps us walk the walk the path to achieving the objective that we set out for ourselves. Now we had a bit of a connection issue looks like in between, but inshallah we'll send the recording later on tonight to everyone. Shukran Jazidan, speak to everyone next week inshallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.